Borida Paub, good morning everybody. Uh, this is your do now task for today. It's uh, five questions that we went over last week um, in the classification and naming species lessons. Uh, so I want you to answer these questions in your class notebook assignment. So uh, pause the video now to answer them and then we'll go over the answers in a second. Okay, so let's go through the answers now. Number one, name the five kingdoms. So that's Animalia, Plants, Prokaryotes, and I'll put in brackets there, Bacteria. protists and fungi okay so the five kingdoms animalia plants prokaryotes protists and fungi number two what do we use to make a binomial name so we use the genus of an organism and the species of an organism. And now number three, what is a species? So a species is a group of similar organisms that have certain features in common okay so species is a group of similar organisms that have certain features in common okay number four name the five types of vertebrate so remember the animalia kingdom was split into vertebrates and invertebrates and then uh, the vertebrate section had five different categories in it so those categories are mammals, fish, reptiles, amphibians, and birds. Okay, and finally number five, name the four types of invertebrate. So that was arthropods, which remember was like insects, annelids, nematodes, and mollusks. Okay, so if you got all of those give yourself a tick and a mark out of five and we'll move on to today's lesson so today uh, the lesson is about competition and biodiversity the date today is Dave Maus 26th of Yonau uh, your learning objective for today is to describe competition in animals and plants and understand why biodiversity is important and the keywords for today are competition, food, mates, space, territory, biodiversity, conservation, and I'm also going to add in here inter specific and intra specific. So these are important words that we're going to use in today's lesson. Okay, so to start off, what is competition? So competition will occur between organisms in an ecosystem when their niches overlap. They both try to use the same resources and the resource is in short supply. So animals will compete for food, water, space to live 
and mates, and plants will compete for light, water, minerals, and root space. I should add here that when we talk about animals, space to live, we can say territory. Okay, so an animal will have its own territory, and that's where this, you know, that's the space that it takes up, and all of its resources are in its territory. So there's two main types of competition. This is using our keywords uh, that I wrote in. So interspecific competition occurs between individuals of different species and intraspecific competition occurs between individuals of the same species, okay? So I've colour coordinated them here so you can tell the difference. So interspecific is purple, so we can underline different there in purple. So interspecific is between different species and intraspecific is between the same species. Okay, so intraspecific is usually more intense than interspecific competition because the individuals have the same niche uh, so are competing for exactly the same resources. Uh, individuals that are better competitors will have a greater chance of surviving to reproduce and pass on their genes. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, each of the things that animals compete for. So the first one we're going to look at is food. Um, so all animals require food, uh, that, which provides them with the energy and the raw materials they need to complete life processes. And uh, without food, animals will die. Uh, there are many birds which eat insects in our gardens, and some have evolved to only eat certain types of insects to reduce competition from other species. Um, others, like the blue tit and the great tit, compete with other members of their own species as well as others for different insects. And because food is so vital, many animals will compete for it. The next thing animals will compete for is uh, mates, so uh, sexual partners that they can make offspring and pass their genes on. Uh, it's really essential for species to pass their genes on to their offspring. Um, that's one of the main parts of life. And animals have evolved to have an innate or natural drive to reproduce. And this competition often results in fights. Uh, this is seen each year when animals like the red deer group together at the start of the mating season. So large male deer fight with each other by locking their antlers together and pushing hard. And that's called a rut. Uh, in deer and many other species, these fights competing for mates can often result in serious injury or death. Um, but benefits the population as only the strongest mate will be able to reproduce and pass on their genes to the next generation. And the last thing that animals compete for uh, is territory, so that's the space where they live. Uh, territories of animals contain all of the resources and conditions an animal will need to survive. That includes abiotic factors such as light, temperature, water and oxygen for aquatic animals and also biotic factors such as food and predators. Many animals, including cats in your back gardens, will fight for territory. Okay, so here's a little review to see if you've understood the first part of the lesson. So if you could answer these four questions in your class notebook assignment. Um, so pause the video now to answer those and then we'll go through the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so number one, what is interspecific competition? And the answer to that is competition between individuals of different species. Okay, so interspecific competition is between individuals of different species and
and intraspecific is between individuals of the same species. Okay. Uh, number three, what are the three things animals compete for? So we said food, mates, and territory. So remember, territory is uh, the space where animals live. Uh, number four, give one reason for each thing that you said in question three as to why animals would compete for it. Okay, so let's put food, mates, and territory down the side here. And say one reason for each of these why animals need to compete for it. So for food, if animals don't compete for food, they would die. Okay, so would die without it. Um, mates, I'll just move the screen up here. Mates is to pass on genes to their offspring. And territory contains all resources needed to survive. Needed to survive. Okay, so uh, animals compete for food because without it they would die. They compete for mates to pass on their genes to their offspring. And they compete for territory to get... Uh, all the resources they need to survive. So give yourself a mark out of four for those and we'll move on to the next part of the lesson. Okay, so now we're going to look at competition in plants. So the first thing that plants will compete for is light. Um, all plants and algae need light for photosynthesis. Plants compete for light by growing quickly to reach it and often shade other plants with their leaves. So if you've ever grown plants, um, you can see that they always grow towards the sun and that's to get the most amount of light. Uh, when an old tree in a forest dies and falls to the ground, there is a race to fill up the gap in the canopy. So the canopy is the where the top of the tree is in the forest um, and when there's a gap there's a lot of light so the other trees race to fill that space so that they can get the most light uh, it doesn't look like a race to us because it happens really slowly but um it is really important for plants to move towards the light to get the most they can the next thing plants will always compete for is water so plants get their water from the soil uh, water is a reactant in photosynthesis and it is essential that plants have a regular supply of water for photosynthesis to occur. Uh, some fully grown trees like oak trees lose a lot of water per day. So oak trees lose 150 litres of water per day. Um, and that's used to transport materials through the plant to the leaves. Some plants have roots that are shallow but extend a long way from the tree to maximise the update of water after rainfall. And other plants have roots that are deep to find water stores underground. So uh, plants have come up with a lot of ways to find the best source of water. Different plants do it in different ways. Okay, so the next thing plants need to compete for is minerals. So plants will get minerals from the soil and plants will require minerals for healthy growth uh, so the main ones are nitrates and magnesium and if plants can't get this from the soil then they won't be healthy and they won't grow properly um, and that's called uh, deficiency so if they're deficient in these minerals they won't grow um, efficiently Plants that grow in soils with few minerals, such as bogs, have evolved different ways of accessing minerals. 
Uh, some, like the Venus flytrap and pitcher plants, have evolved to be carnivores and consume insects, enable them to grow more successfully than their competitors on mineral poor soil. Okay, so those plants have evolved so that they can find their minerals in other ways other than soil, because some places have deficient soil. And the last thing plants compete for is space, so that's uh, space for the roots and the canopy of trees. Um, so they, plants require enough space for healthy growth. So if there's not enough space for roots to grow, um, the plant will be able to get enough water. And if there's not enough space for the canopy of a tree to grow properly, uh, the, the tree won't get enough light. So um, this one's quite important and it links in with the other things that plants compete for. Um, yeah, so this means their leaves are not shaded, which maximises photosynthesis. So again, the it needs a lot of light and the roots need to have space to grow to get water. Some gardeners have experimented by planting vegetables very close together. Um, and that meant the much smaller vegetables were being produced. So the less space you give a plant the less it's going to grow. If you give a plant a lot of space, it's going to have the capacity to grow really big and really healthy. So we're going to do review two. Um, it's the same as the end of review one. So name the four things that plants compete for and give a reason for each one of those why plants compete for it. So I want you to answer these two questions again in your class notebook assignment. Let's pause the video here and then we'll go through the answers. So the answers to question one is light, water, minerals, and space. So we'll do the same thing we did earlier. I will write them down the side and then we'll say one reason for each one. and space so for light and water the reason plants compete for it is for photosynthesis that's for both of these ones and for both of these ones, the reason plants compete for minerals and space is for healthy growth. Okay, so give yourselves a mark out of two for that one. And then we'll move on to the next part of the lesson. The next part that we're going to look at is biodiversity. So biodiversity is specifically the number of different species in an ecosystem. So um, an area with large populations of few species is not biodiverse. Um, population numbers of organisms are constantly fluctuating due to a number of reasons. So competition for resources, predation, disease, pollution and human impact on habitats. So to explain this a little bit better, ecosystems with a higher biodiversity have fewer species that depend on just one other species for food, uh, shelter or maintaining their environment. So ecosystems with high biodiversity are more stable and they can easily adjust to changes because they're not so dependent on a small amount of species. Uh, so areas like tropical rainforests have millions of different species living in there. So that means they're very biodiverse. But areas like uh, polar regions or deserts, um, they don't have many species living there. Uh, so they're less biodiverse. There's less species that can in interact. Uh, so that makes it less biodiverse. So humans and biodiversity... Obviously, humans uh, are animals, so we have a role in biodiversity. 
and we are slowly realising that the future of our species on Earth depends on maintaining high biodiversity. We've now found out that biodiversity is important for human well-being as it provides food, uh, potential foods, industrial materials and new medicines and we need all of those to survive properly. Uh, activities that create air and water pollution are reducing biodiversity in many ecosystems. Um, conservation of species and habitats by charities, governments and individuals helps to maintain the range of biodiversity and this is becoming a bigger thing that we're seeing around the world. So conservation and animal protection is a positive human impact that we've had. Uh, so ways we've done this is through the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, uh, sites of special scientific interest, captive breeding programmes, national parks, seed or sperm banks, and local biodiversity action plans. So when you see um, endangered species that are in zoos, um, the zoo will probably have a breeding program to uh, increase the amount of uh, animals in that species so that we can maintain the biodiversity, okay? And national parks are protected spaces, so all of the uh, species that live in those ecosystems are protected and no one is allowed to uh, touch them or harm them or anything, so that make sure we protect the biodiversity there. Um, seed or sperm banks means that um, we have a store of, of sperm and seeds so that we can um, artificially inseminate different species to increase their populations. And local governments will have different biodiversity action plans for their communities um, a lot of different communities have different uh, ecosystems and uh, different species living there humans have actually also had a very big negative impact on biodiversity um, we've caused a lot of destruction and pollution in the world which has killed off a lot of species um, some of the ways we've done this are um, the overuse of fertilisers can cause eutrophication, which affects um, aquatic life. Fish farming, so um, we overfish in a lot of places, which is causing the biodiversity in the waters to decrease rapidly. Introduction of non-indigenous species. So uh, in some countries where there's a lot of a certain animal, uh, some governments like to introduce non-indigenous species to try and kill out the um, the population that's overrunning. Uh, but a lot of the time that just messes the ecosystem up and um, it all goes wrong. And deforestation and destruction of habitats, that's probably the biggest one. We've destroyed a lot of habitats, um, we've burnt down a lot of forests and that has destroyed a lot of what was once a really highly biodiverse ecosystem um, those animals now don't have a place to live so they will die out and go extinct because of what we have done as humans so we have had a massive negative impact on biodiversity in different ecosystems okay so review three again i want you to answer these in your class notebook assignment so pause the video here go and answer these five questions about biodiversity and then come back and we'll go through the answers. Okay, so I'm uh, going to write the answers to these underneath the questions because there's not much room. Number one, what is biodiversity? So biodiversity is the number of different species in an ecosystem okay so biodiversity is the number of different species in an ecosystem number two what causes population numbers to fluctuate so competition 
for resources. Predation. Pollution. Disease. And human impacts. Okay, so population numbers fluctuate because of competition for resources, predation, pollution, disease, and human impact on different habitats. Number three, give one example of a highly biodiverse habitat and one example of a less biodiverse habitat. So um, high, so more biodiverse would be like a tropical rainforest. And a less biodiverse ecosystem would be like the polar regions. Okay, so uh, an ecosystem with a high biodiversity would be a rainforest. A lot of species live in a rainforest. And a ecosystem with low biodiversity would be a polar region because not many species live there. Okay. Number four. Why is biodiversity important for humans? Uh, so biodiversity provides humans with... So it provides uh, food, medicines, and industrial materials. Okay, so biodiversity is important for humans because it provides food, medicine, and industrial materials. And finally, number five, give one positive impact and one negative impact that humans have had on biodiversity. So I'll scroll down here. So number five, so I'll put positive, negative. So one positive impact is uh, captive breeding programs. So those are done mainly at zoos. So um, London Zoo, ZSL, has a very big um, breeding program. So does Chester Zoo. There are programs on TV about it. You might have seen with David Attenborough and The Secret Life of the Zoo. It shows you how they um, make sure that the species that live in their zoos um, increase their population numbers. And a negative impact humans have had... Um, I'm going to say deforestation and habitat destruction. So uh, give yourself a mark out of five for review three and then we'll move on. Okay, so finally, I want you guys to go and answer this past paper question in your class notebook assignment. It's about biodiversity involving bees in the UK. Okay, so uh, once you've answered that question, hand in your class notebook assignment. And uh, that's it for today's lesson. So uh, thanks, guys.